This is the tenth video in this series working on a pool table model in Blender. And in this video we're going to see what we can do with the wooden portion of our model. So let's go into our image editor. We'll go into the GIMP, open that up, and play around with our image some, see what we can do. So I'm going to make a rectangular selection for the area I'm going to use to map my wood to. So I'll select this area, and I'm going to need one of my dialogues here. I'm going to need the patterns dialog, so I can pick a pattern. And I'll pick one of the wood grain patterns, and I guess I'll go with one of the darker patterns. Let's see, what's that like? Hmm. I like that one, so I'm going to try that out, see what it looks like. So I'll go edit and I'll fill this space with the pattern. And that doesn't look so great, not in this image. But we're going to see what it looks like when we map it onto our pool table. So I'm going to play around with the levels a little bit and change the color of that, maybe darken it up and give it a little bit of contrast from the white point here. And I think I like that. So I'm going to try that out. So I'll save that. And go back into Blender. I'll load that image up. So we just reload the image. And it'll appear with the wood in it. And that is such a reoccurring pattern that you wouldn't think it would look that great mapped to our, mapped to our table. But... Well, we'll just see how that turns out. So I'll select the wood area. And what I'm going to do here is move the table onto a bit of an angle and rotate it a bit on that angle as well. And zoom in a bit. Take it into edit mode. Select all. And U key. Unwrap. Project from view. That places our image into the editor. So let's play around with this in the editor a bit. First off I'll move it around. See what kind of patterns I get on my table. And I'll try rotating it. And as I'm doing this I can see the way the pattern is impacting on the table. And already it doesn't look so bad and it certainly doesn't really look as reoccurring as it does in the image editor. And we can play around with this quite a bit. We can just try rotating it as well as scaling it to get that pattern to sit a little bit differently. And some of the things we can try also would be to just fatten it up a bit. So scale it in one direction. And each different change is going to change the way that image sits. We can try scaling it down and up. And the way it looks when it's scaled down is kind of nice. Although there's a little bit of irregularity here. And we can deal with this regularity also. And one way to do that would be to... Just select the bottom portion of our model and grab that up and manipulate the different angles that the sides are sitting on and that'll change the way the sides appear in the editor. And already I don't think that looks so bad. Um, actually I think it looks fairly reasonable. Best way to find out how it looks is to do a render. So let's call up our camera. We'll need both layers there. Have a look through it. Perhaps we could use lowering that camera a bit. It's pretty high up. And pull it back a bit also. So we can get a good look at the image in terms of the wood grain. 
And while we have the camera up, let's turn on the ambient occlusion setting to increase the quality of our renders. And I'll do a render of this and cut out of my video while it's rendering. Ambient occlusion is going to slow that down a bit. So, there we go. Well, it looks like I forgot a pretty important setting here. So, I'll close this up and try again. I'll select the table and remember to initiate the text space option and that's what will happen if we forget that option it won't map from the image at all and it only appears to be coming from there without it so I'll render that again and this is what our table looks like and I'm thinking that from that really cruddy looking reoccurring pattern that we had in uh, UV image to what actually maps on to our object is completely different and this has got a pretty nice look to it and I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing to do would be to look at the legs. Close this up and I'm going to glance at my time see how much I have left. I still have a few minutes left so let's look at the legs. Now one thing I know about the legs already is that I've never done anything about the normals and if we were to look at those legs in terms of the normals we'd find that they're flipped around and this object needs to be selected control N for the hotkeys to recalculate the outside normals so we'll recalculate those to set the normals properly and then use the more or less the same routine as with uh, tabletop rotate it around a bit until it's sitting on an angle and unwrap it. So we'll use the project from view option and move that up into the wood grain. And again play around with the rotation a bit. And then play around with the scale a bit as well. And as I'm doing that, I'm just looking to get a somewhat of a matching type of grain onto the legs. And again, I don't think that that looks all that bad. And kind of the legs, I'm going to treat a little bit secondary because I don't really plan on doing a lot of looking at the underneath portion of the table. But for the sake of doing a complete project. We'll back off and do a render of that to see what it looks like as a whole. So let's render that. And again I forgot to initiate the text face option. So we'll go back and try again. And there's the render with the legs. Um, they look pretty blocky and you know a little bit more work could probably be put on to those legs but I'm not considering those the most important part of this table. At this point we can make a decision as to whether we want to do something with the pockets or not. And I'm personally thinking that I don't think those pockets are all too important to me and I may play around with the material a bit to see what I can get out of it, and maybe not, because they look okay the way that they are too. Um, in the next video, I'm going to map one of the balls, and just show how to do it, and then come back with a render with a table with the balls on it. So that'll be in the next video, and until then, happy modeling.